Science gives us power. It gives us choice. Sometimes the choice is obvious, but in many areas, there are many different futures, and that leads to ethical questions that don't have an obvious answer. Having worked in genetics for the last 25 years, what I've really learned is that there are very practical ethical implications of science. For example, people are making daily decisions about do I test my pregnancy for a condition? Am I frightened about whether I will develop a genetic condition in the future? So these all have an ethical conundrum at the heart of them and these issues can be applied to all sorts of areas of science in a very, very practical way. Science really can have impacts beyond even what we imagine, and therein lies our interest in funding these Kavli Centers for Ethics, Science, and the Public. One at Cambridge University in the UK, and the other at University of California, Berkeley. The centers will create opportunities for scientists and the scientific enterprise to listen to the public, to hear the public's concerns, to hear the public's ideas, and that could actually affect how science is done. And so with that, we want to try a number of different approaches and see what works and learn from it and learn from each other. What I hope the center will be able to do, in addition to answering some of these fundamental questions about the ethical directions for science, is to train cohorts of researchers who will have benefited from seeing how other scientific disciplines grapple with similar kinds of ethical problems and have real training in the philosophical analysis of these questions. So I think we want a generation of scientific leaders who can actually lead their fields in the right direction. In Cambridge, we really hope to create and understand new ways of connecting with public audiences, and that will involve experimental methods. So what we want to do is to learn the best techniques from the creative storytelling industry and from advertising industry and journalism and PR. I think it's important to fund these centers now because it's long overdue. And what's exciting is that in both of these cases, I think there's a possibility for a real paradigm shift in how scientists do their work. What these new Kavli centers will do is bring public society together with the scientists much earlier on in the process so they can co-create the design of research and debate the ethical implications so that science and society are in partnership. It's about changing what it means to be a good scientist in every discipline where it can have an impact on the public. We also hope that these centers at Cambridge and Berkeley really chart the course, that they'll be the vanguard for where we're headed, that this is setting the new direction for where science should go and how science is connected to the world. Living in a world where we see science changing so rapidly on the timescale of a human lifetime, I think this is a really key moment to start inventing ways to weave together the expertise and the more gathered priorities of society. The decisions about how one uses science, how one uses new technologies, how one evaluates where one's going to apply it, where one's not going to apply it, often those still are questions that need input. I hope we will model a culture of curiosity and experimentation and a humility where the experts really engage publics together to think about these issues. Often we think of a story about science and we think of a story about society and actually it's about bringing those together and recognising that that's one narrative. This is science as conversation and we all have something to bring to the table to create what is effectively the story of us. What we hope to achieve by launching these new centres is to see long-term change that really affects how people do their scientific research and how they think about it.